What's up everybody? Between all of the press out there, a lot of it misleading about the NAR settlement, we seem to have forgotten that a realtor's commission is not what affects home prices. In fact, if you listen to Barbara Corcoran, in today's market, the biggest influence on home prices is interest rates, meaning that with lower rates, prices will rise. If rates go down just another percentage point, prices are gonna go through the roof, the self-made real estate millionaire and Shark Tank star told Fox Business. Everyone will come out and buy. There are probably 10 buyers on the sidelines for each home on the market, waiting for interest rates to come down, she continued. So everybody's gonna charge the market. Even if everybody charges the market, will there be enough houses to buy? JP Morgan said recently that they believe the housing market is starting to thaw and that many mortgage locked in sellers are opting to put their homes on the market because they believe these high interest rates aren't going away anytime soon. According to the National Association of Realtors, existing home sales jumped 9.5% in February while existing home inventory rose 5.9% from the prior month. So today, we'll take a look at that interview with Barbara Corcoran for Fox Business, as reported by Elena Botrus for Fortune in an article titled, Self-Made Real Estate Millionaire Barbara Corcoran Says Home Prices Could Go Up Another 10% If Mortgage Rates Drop, as well as Jennifer Soar's article for Business Insider titled, The Housing Market is Thawing as an Increasing Number of Mortgage Lock Homes Go Up for Sale, JP Morgan Says. We will also debunk a lot more stuff about the NAR settlement. I gotta tell you, these headlines are really interesting. And take a look at today's housing market. Corcoran herself also spoke about the settlement, so we'll touch on her opinion as well. And if you want to comment, I encourage you to do so. I know this NAR settlement has brought up a lot of feelings about realtors and money. Just be respectful. Contrary to some of your opinions, I do not report your comments. In fact, the only comments that I do report are those scammers that are trying to sell you their financial advisor because I don't want you to think that I vouch for any of them. I have no idea who they are and I don't want to give you the impression that I do. In fact, if you see any of those comments about the crypto financial advisors, report them or let us know and we'll do it. Just wish they would leave my channel alone. So let's dive right in. As of March 28th, the average 30 year fixed mortgage was 6.91% as reported by Mortgage News Daily. That's a lot lower than the 8% reported last October but still double the interest rates that we saw during the pandemic. The Federal Reserve chose not to cut interest rates at its last meeting, but still claims that they will cut rates this year, many people speculating it will happen in June. They say they remain committed to three rate cuts by the end of the year. The decision, which was widely expected, keeps the federal funds rate between a range of 5.25% to 5.5%, a 22-year high. This will also keep rates for mortgages, loans, and credit cards at elevated levels. Once interest rates go down, mortgage rates will follow. In response to the possibility of lower mortgage rates, Corcoran warns Americans that instead of getting a cheaper deal when rates go down, the housing market may actually heat up. If you wait for interest rates to come down by another point, I don't think you'll gain. I think you'll wind up paying more, Corcoran cautioned because I wouldn't be surprised if real estate went up by another eight or 10% if interest rates come down. There's a magic number that makes people get all juicy about, and it has to slide down there for everybody to say, let's get out there and take advantage of it, she added. In her view, 6% seems to be that magic number. And once mortgage rates dip to that point, sideline buyers will come rushing back to the market. According to a survey by Realtor.com, of 5,000 U.S. customers conducted during the first week of November, when rates were at their highest, about 18% of Americans said they were waiting until rates fell below 7%. If they dropped below 6%, another 22% of them said they would get into the market. But the vast majority, around 72%, said that rates would have to get below 5% before they decided to buy a home. So if you look at the latest mortgage rate forecast for the average 30-year fixed mortgage rate, both Wells Fargo and the Mortgage Bankers Association thinks rates will dip to 6% or lower by the first quarter of 2025. Fannie Mae doesn't think this is gonna happen until the fourth quarter of 2025. The lowest that the three of them forecast for this year is 6.1% by the end of the year. By the final quarter of 2025, Fannie Mae expects rates to be 6%, while Wells Fargo's model expects 5.8%, and the Mortgage Bankers Association estimates 5.5%. 
So if Corcoran is correct, does this mean that the housing market will explode in 2025? And will there be enough homes to buy? And how does the NAR settlement affect the future of the housing market, and specifically home prices? According to JP Morgan, more existing home inventory is coming to the market as sellers give up those low mortgage rates, as well as more new construction. There are around 1.6 million homes currently being constructed, JP Morgan estimated. Meanwhile, housing completions jumped to 1.7 million in February, 15.6% higher than they were last year, census data shows. The housing sector was one of the hardest hit areas of the economy when the Fed began raising rates. But there are signs activity has turned a corner, said JP Morgan strategist Stephanie Aliaga. She does clarify that a recovery for the housing market will most likely be gradual, and it may take years for supply to catch up with demand. Unfortunately, with more demand than supply, home prices will keep rising. In an already unaffordable housing market, some estimate that the national average home price has risen almost 50% since the start of the pandemic. It's almost unfathomable what another 8-10% to increase will look like if Corcoran is correct. Interestingly enough, many headlines have suggested that home prices could fall in the aftermath of the National Association of Realtors' $418 million settlement, which above all made it so commissions could no longer be baked in to the listing price. Corcoran doesn't see that happening. The cost of housing, I believe, will go up because it has been going up for the last five years, despite the dire state of the shortage of houses, Corcoran said. There's not enough houses to go around. Even if sellers are paying a smaller commission, they want the most money they can get, so they're going to take any savings and put it in their pocket," she explained. We actually went over this exact scenario in a video I did a few weeks back with my example of an $850,000 house that would have offered a 5-6% to commission pre-NAR settlement. If a seller can now only offer half of that 2.5-3% to their own agent and forego the buyer's broker, do you really think the seller will say to themselves, hey, now I'll offer my home to the public for $825,000 since I'm not paying that 3%? No, of course not. The seller will put their house on the market for the $850,000 and just pocket that extra 3%. Corcoran continues on the topic of the NAR settlements by commenting that commissions have always been negotiable. The only big change is that everything will be in writing. I think that was needed for clarity, she said, and I agree with her. Botros reminds us that Corcoran herself used to be a broker. She started her own brokerage firm, the Corcoran Group, in the early 70s and eventually sold it for $66 million. But the confusing part is sellers and buyers brokers are not allowed to look up commissions anymore on the MLS, Corcoran continued, referring to the multiple listing service. There's no status as to whether I'll pay you as a broker or I won't pay you as a broker, so it's a guessing game. At this point, you may be saying to yourself, Exactly. We don't want realtors steering buyers to listings that are offering bigger commissions. And I agree with you, and I'm not naive enough not to say there aren't some bad apples out there. But let's dig a little deeper. If a buyer has an agreement with their broker to pay them 2.5% if the seller is not offering compensation to the buyer's broker, or even more importantly, if a buyer can't afford to pay for their own representation, or isn't allowed to pay like the VA, the Veterans Association, but wants to have their own representation. So ask their broker to show them properties only where compensation is being offered. How is that gonna work? Will buyers or their realtors be forced to call each individual listing agent and ask them if they're offering compensation since it's not transparent on the MLS? And is this really solving the problem or is it causing more confusion? Now, I know a lot of you out there believe a buyer doesn't need representation and that's your opinion and you're entitled to it. But to be honest, we're not talking about you right now. There are a lot of people out there who want their own representation for the biggest purchase of their life. I actually had one of my viewers ask me what I do as a buyer's agent that provides value in the comments last week. He asked, so I answered. But that still wasn't good enough. For some people, it just doesn't matter what we say. Some people just don't like realtors and they swear they just would never use one. And that's okay. I'm not here to convince you. I'm just here to debunk the false narrative that lower commissions equal lower home prices. Home prices are affected by supply and demand. Interest rates also affect demand and supply. 
For example, if you have a super low interest rate and that's why you're not putting your house on the market, you are affecting the decrease in supply. As Barbara Corcoran said, but despite that, and overriding all of that is a shortage of houses. You can't erase a shortage of houses and it's gonna push that market forward. Let's end this video with some data on today's housing market, which actually shows an increase in supply. According to Redfin's latest housing market update for the four weeks ending March 24th, new listings were up 14.8%, the biggest increase since June of 2021. New listings increased the most year over year in San Jose, California, up 41.8%, Sacramento, California, up 38%, and Phoenix, up 31.7%. The metros with the biggest decrease in new listings year over year are Atlanta, down 6.6%, and Chicago, down 2.9%. Active listings are up 6.3% year over year, the biggest increase since May of 2023. The median sale price is up 4.6% year over year. The metros with the biggest year over year home sale price increases are West Palm Beach up 20.7%, San Jose, California up 17.6%, and Miami up 16.1%. 26.8% of the homes sold above the list price, up from 26% a year ago. 5.8% of the homes did have a price drop, up 1.6 points from a year ago. If you missed last week's video when Redfin CEO Glenn Kalman said the housing market is in for decades of pain, definitely check that out next. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye.